Hello, Global Theater. My name is Jerry Fialka. Today is March 1, 2022. We want to thank Rob Grant and his amazing podcast, I'm Probably Wrong About Everything. It's an honor and a pleasure to be here with Ike Willis. Wow, Ike, where the heck are you calling in from? I'm in I'm at home. I'm at home. I'm over in Van Nuys, California. Van Nuys, the first question, Ike, is what is the best thing for a human being? What's the best thing for a human being? <laughs> oh man, that's a that's an interesting question. Um, uh, let's see, just to be able to do, be able to do the things you love to do, I guess. And that's you know, luckily for me, I've been able to. Uh, I've been able to play music and so far stay alive. So far. That is good. Ike, what's your favorite form of information, how it comes into you? I don't know. I still watch TV, but, uh, you know, <laughs> but uh, I'm, I'm, I'm an, um, I still, I still, um, uh, I, I, I'm not, I'm not a total internet nut, but I, you know, I, 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 I go on the internet and, you know, the the usual I'm an old I'm an old I'm an old coot and I'm 66 years old so you know I watch TV I and I and I get on my I get on my computer from time to time you know and and just to see what's going just to check on the world yeah what why do you think humans collect or gather information why do I think they do yeah well you know at a, well. You know how people are. I mean, they they want to get what well, the the average person wants to get um, as much information as 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 they possibly can. But you know, I the 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 last five six years, I'm really not sure. You know, it, it people people are are the kind of information people are gathering seems a little strange to me you know i mean it's it's kind of kind of hard to kind of hard to understand what they do with that information once they get it it is difficult it's a challenge but do you think this need or want for us to collect information is more innate or more invented well these days i think it's more invented I mean, yeah. uh, I mean, right now, like I said, over the last, yeah, I, I, I tell you what, I tell you what, over the last 10 years or so, I, it seems to be more invented than anything else than, than innate, because I mean, well, look, look well, well uh, without going into politics, it's, it's, it's kind of hard to, it's, 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 it's kind of weird, you know, but I, I think people are settling more for invented information than innate information. That's I, I agree with you there. It's sort of weird. It's like create the disease and offer the cure. Exactly. Exactly. Do, like, do thoughts create emotions? Yes, I agree. I, I think so. I think so. Yeah. And fill in the blank, Ike. I don't know what I think until I. I don't know what I think until I have a chance to, to, collate and uh, to, to 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 see and hear and 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 collate the information for myself. Exactly. Can humans think without language? I don't know. That's a very good question because. Um, that's 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 a very good question. It seems like later lately they can't, but I I'm lucky enough to have friends who have have common sense and and actually you know are able to to actually able to think at all times. What well, Chomsky says a language is not just words. It's culture, tradition, a unification of community, a whole history that creates what a community is. Ike, what do you do 
when language breaks down, when language doesn't work, what do you do? I usually leave the room. <laughs> that's, that's a smart strategy. I usually think... leave the room, man. I usually get the hell out of there because <laughs> when language breaks down, people start getting violent, or and they start getting, you know what I mean, and and, and they yeah. just start getting, they get things start getting strained. Yeah. I do. You think humans? Your observations of humans are they more? I know it's both, and it depends. But your hunch. Are humans more feeling beings or more thinking beings? I'd say at my age right now, um, it seems like they're more feeling, you know, that instead of thinking, you know, a lot of people, it just seems people start, they, 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 they feel first and just leap off into the, the atmosphere with, with how they think, how they feel first. Before they before they start thinking about anything, yeah. Well, Bridget Bardot nailed it. She goes, "When I make love, I don't think. I'm like, good luck. How can you shut yeah. your brain when you're doing the most sensuous thing human could practically do? But, but it's like meditating. They say, think about not thinking. Think about not thinking. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Like good luck. Well, Alan exactly. Turing. Asked, yeah, Alan Turing asked these two questions in 1950. The first one I ask you, is thinking a function of the soul? I always thought it was something like that. I mean, a very big part of it, I think. Yeah. And his second question was, can machines think? Well, I think we're getting to that point right now. Um, Technology-wise, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, that... that it it's kind of it's it's kind of hard to say, but uh, in terms of te in terms of technology, close. Yeah, talk about technology. You sort of dropped out a little there. Repeat. Yeah, still there. Yeah, like I said, the way technology is going, it's we're getting close. We're yeah, getting we're close. Getting, yeah. Yeah, right, I'm here. Do you, we're yeah, getting good. close. You, we're getting close. Yep. Do you more pursue happiness or more pursue meaning? I pursue uh, uh, um, happiness through meaning, if that makes any sense. Yeah. No, that makes a lot if of sense. Makes, if that makes any yes. sense. No, because it makes sense. Does the brain more detect consciousness or create consciousness? Like, is consciousness there bubbling? Say that away again. Like, is consciousness more detected by us or created by us? Like, is consciousness there bubbling away and we're detecting it or are we creating consciousness? You know... I think maybe it may be a little bit of both. You know, yeah. I think it may be a little bit of both depending on the circumstances. You know what I mean? Yep. What's faster, speed of light or speed of thought? I think speed of thought. Dude, there's no right or wrong answers to any of these questions, but that one you got right. Thank you. <laughs> so, um, is yeah, great... I, I think sweet. Yeah, no, I agree. There's a great poet, Audre Lorde. She said, you can't dismantle the master's house using the master's tools. Ah. Filmmaker, filmmaker Yvonne Rayner responded to Audre Lorde and said, you can if you expose the tools. What new tool do you suggest or do you Im Im employ? I don't know if it, I don't know if it's a new tool. I would say still thought. You got to think about what you're doing. You got to know what you got to know what you're doing. You know? Right. It, I it, love it takes, that. It answer. takes some um, Yeah. I think it takes it, it it just that's what it makes what makes sense to me. Yeah, no, that thought thinking is great. Someone recently said intuition. And you know the word news 
But here's what I got uh, uh, suggested by someone recently. They said, what new toy do you suggest? That what? What new Say toy? Again? T -O what new toy do you suggest? T O Y toy. Oh man, I don't know. I don't know. I want to ask my grandkids about that. <laughs> there you go. I, I have to ask my grandchildren about that. Yeah, that, that, that's what grandkids are all uh -huh. about. That's why they love grandparents? That's what right. do you worry? What do you worry about when you go to bed at night? Whether or not I'm going to wake up the next morning. Very that good. Let's hope. I mean, let's hope. Yeah. Let's yeah. hope for longevity. You know, uh, Louis Bunuel yes, said it please. best: "Long live the living." Yep. So. Um, Marsha McLuhan learned from Ezra Pound that artists, musicians, are the antenna of the race. They're broadcasting and detecting the hidden psychic effects of our inventions so that we can cope with what we don't like about them. So my right. question is what McLuhan proved his whole career. Why do humans, why do we still ignore the hidden psychic effects of our inventions, even though artists, filmmakers, musicians are broadcasting them to us? Uh, I'm, not, I'm not quite sure. Fear. A lot of people fear anything that's new and, 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 and innovative. And, and well, yeah, yeah, it, it's, it's fear, fear of the unknown. Fear is an answer I get no. a lot. That's you know? yeah, fear of the unknown. So, are you more afraid of new ideas or or old ideas? Oh, I'm afraid more afraid of old ones because, uh, like I said, over the last over the, the last ten years, people seem to be regressing to old, you know, to old ideas and 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 finding comfort and being more comfortable with the you know the old the old days and the old stuff and the old ideas and uh, yeah. i'm not i'm not quite sure that that i like that yeah do artists musicians filmmakers do they have a moral obligation to do what that's the thing yeah. That yeah. Sometimes, you know, you know what I mean. I mean, yeah. to do what? That that's a that's a very good question because um, as an artist and as a an actor, as a you know all that stuff, I know I have a moral obligation to myself and my family, and my friends, to do the best. And, and 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 well yeah and 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 be the and do the best i can yeah yeah that's that's beautiful i like that and i can you conjure up your earliest memory ever or one of them uh well uh i uh, i seem to remember <laughs> it just sounds crazy but I see my earliest memory seems to be when I was a, a baby in the hospital knocking over a bottle onto the floor and there's a bunch of other screaming babies around. Wow, that's a good memory. And so you riled up the, 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 the nursery. Hey, I, I, you know, I riled up the crowd somehow. I don't know, but, and I remember it. I, I remember a woman, a nurse, I guess it's, a, a, it was a nurse, in her white suit walking across the room and, and, and you know, and, and, and shushing everybody down. I mean, that weird. Do you think memory is more a curse or more a blessing? Both. Yeah. Both. Yes. I've been, I've been cursed and blessed by it all my life. I think it's both. Yeah. 
Like, tell me someone within your immediate family and then outside your immediate family, just briefly, who had an impact on you, was like a role model, and what specifically did you get from them? Oh, man. That's that's weird. Um, parents. My parents were to get to to get to the places where I I I'd, I'd managed to get myself to, and outside of my family, naturally one of them was like was Frank. Because I learned, I learned a lot from him as well, and he and my actually he and my parents got along quite well. He and Frank and my parents got along quite well. Um, I was always basically I was parents taught taught me, and even even when I was working for, with with Frank, he taught me to always always learn something you know always learn something positive from whatever situation or circumstance that i was in you know and pretty 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 wild actually and it turned out that he and my he and my parents they got along whenever whenever he whenever they met up you know when i was on tour and, and whatnot they got along so well they spent hours and hours and hours talking together how cool is that? How did Very. how did that is cool? But let's stay on Frank for a second. How would you yeah. answer this? How did Frank shape your behavior? Well, in a lot of ways. Um, basically, Frank was he he was the, he was the king of common sense. Okay, and I I would always. What he would basically, I I would always try to see, try to find a way to make sense of things. You know what I mean? They had to make sense in order for me to be able to just to 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 go along with it, or to follow along with anything. It had to make it had to make some sort of sense. You know? Yeah. It had to make some sort of sense. That's beautiful. We're going to get back to Frank and music, but. Did your parents raise you a particular religion? No. And I grew up in a religious family. I mean, I was baptized Catholic and my and then 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 later on in life my parents were deacon in whatever church they were, but I was never I was never told to ascribe to a particular religion. Period. Do you pray? That depends on what you call pray, you know. Yeah. I wish, I hope, I you know, you know. Uh, sometimes I sometimes I go, please God, come on. Especially when I got, uh, especially after I got diagnosed with prostate cancer, I was like, oh man, you know, not this, you know, the don't let me die and that kind of thing. <laughs> you know, it's it, it's. But I don't I don't know what you would consider. Uh, how, how how that would de be defined as praying? You, un you understand? It's it's kind of I, I don't know. I, I I don't know. I I guess I do in my own way. Yeah. No, that was good. Wish, hope, desire. Those yeah, wish, good hope. Things. You know, dream. Yeah. Yes, you bet. Yeah, dream. I like dreaming there too. But if God does exist, what would you like God to say to you after you die? Uh, well, um, like, <laughs> welcome aboard. <laughs> I do evil people exist or does evil use people as a vehicle? I would say, I would say a little bit of both, but more so. 
but more so um, people being used as a as a vehicle for evil. Yeah, but I but a little bit of uh, both. But yeah, yeah, yeah. But people are do are do end up being used for evil. You know, by 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 evil. I don't know. I don't know about evil people, but e evil. Evil, uh, God, I can't, I can't think of the word that I want to use, but but well, right, but but for evil itself, yes, yeah, yeah. Evil, evil purposes, yeah. And Ike, this one is similar and related. I'm gonna say a few modern thinkers' thoughts to set it up. The basic question is, how do you advise someone to deal with an enemy? Alan Watts says, if you acknowledge your enemy, you empower them. Coppola stole from the mob and the samurais. Keep your friends close and your enemies right. closer. And your enemies closer. Yeah, JFK said, forgive your enemy, but don't forget their name. Right. And, F and Fellini says, I need an enemy. So it's a lot of thoughts. The basic question is, is how do you, Ike, advise someone to deal with enemy? But first, what would you respond to Alan Watts saying, if you acknowledge your enemy, you empower them. Well, it depends on how you acknowledge them. I would say uh, you, you. I, I, I would. I, I, I partially agree in that. In that, I acknowledge their existence. I, I acknowledge the fact that they're there, but not to give them. But I, I don't. I don't. I don't like to give give them any more credit, publicity, acknowledgement than than they already know that they have. In other words, you, know, you, you see what I'm saying? It's oh, it's yeah. it's yeah. I don't I don't want to give them. I don't I don't uh, I, I I don't think it's a good idea to give your enemy more 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 publicity. You know what I'm saying? It, it, it's just it, it's. That that only that only strengthens them. Yeah, it's like what Neil Young. Do you work for Joe Rogan's de publicity department? Okay, we don't have to go there. I don't want to exactly. get too cut. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, don't I, don't I only just I only I only just heard about that just recently, and I yeah. still and I still don't get it. It's like, come on, give me a break. You know, yeah. they they feed, you know, they feed people like. I guess this uh, this Joe Rogan guy. I think I used to watch him on TV on sitcoms and stuff. Yeah. It, it's like you give why why give any extra any extra uh, uh, publicity to that? You know? Yeah. Well, it is it is a controversial subject. I'm not saying I'm taking one side or the other. I threw that out as a blatant sort of poke. Yeah, in, yeah, yeah. In the question because the dude reaches eight eleven million people a day talking, so he's got yeah. some power, but. But, you know, uh, Ram Das said it great. He said about his enemy, he says, I'm having a real hard time loving George Bush. It's like fill in the blank. I'm having a yeah. real hard time. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, what, what can we do with Putin right now? Love him? I mean, there's nothing. Love him? Yeah. Exactly, as, exactly. As hating him move the project forward, you know? And, de and, and the, answer to that is, the answer to that is definitely not. Yeah. yeah. And so how, wow. this is the next question in that regard. How do you how do we keep our governments from going to war? That look, as a as a political scientist, I see I a, a, in college, that was my field of study when I when I was in college and I met Frank. I'm a political scientist. And that is as that continuously uh, uh, comes around as the big question: How do we keep ourselves? How do we keep from going to war? And and that goes back to thought patterns and and evil and things like that. That goes back to how 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 do you uh, be, being being uh, um, keep people from being influenced by evil? Does evil exist? What form does it take? And and then, and then of course, because war is one of those things that ends up being a, being a result of somebody, you know, having this great idea of theirs, which which always ends up in 
uh, killing other people, taking others, uh, taking someone else's uh, land, property, life, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You know that 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 as a political scientist, that is the big question that's still impossible to answer. At least, at least for me. Yeah, well, it's interesting because Utah Phillips, great political folk singer, said anarchy is making rules for yourself and not other people. Who's this entitled? Who's entitled to make the rules? Right. That is also that also goes along with the big question. You know, it's like how do we <laughs> how do we do that? And 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 uh, um. You go back to the golden rule, you know, do un, do unto others, et cetera, et cetera, and don't but don't step on anybody's neck. But at the, but at the same time, people don't want to listen to that, and it depends on the number of people that don't want to listen to that. We get wars, and we get and we get we get things like that. You know, it's 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 a very it's a very dichotomous situation i it's it's very very strange to try to live with that that to, to live with that situation it's how, how do you answer that it's it's very it's very strange it's very hard really good uh i because it is like this series is really about inventing new questions Right. Uh, McLuhan, McLuhan would say the 20th, 20th, 21st, 22nd century human is running around going, what are the answers? And the, the point is, the thing is really, what are the questions? What are the <laughs> questions? Exactly. Exactly. What are the freaking questions? That is, you know, I, I, I really, I, 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 I truly feel that way. You know, we're not asking... Uh, uh, because a lot of people are not asking the the, the right questions. You know, yeah. what are the questions? You know, and 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 they're putting the cart before the horse. You know. Yeah. Well, no, I I also love Marcel Duchamp. He said, "There's no solution because there's no problems." <laughs> right. <laughs> Very you, good. You create the like this is a problem, then you're empowering it. But you you actually led me to a question I rarely ask. And I'm going to ask it is, do you believe in karma or how do you navigate what people think karma is? Ooh, that's a hard one. Um, uh, basically, I try not to put myself in a position where someone that, that I that I become the subject of karma. You, you see what I'm saying? From through yeah. someone else's eyes. You know, yeah. I try to I try to treat everybody. As 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 well and as respectfully as I possibly can. That way, you know. Oh, so you're going to get it because karma's going to get you, and 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 things like that. And I don't like to, I don't like to put myself in the position where I'd be the some the subject of someone else's karma, reverse karma, you know, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Because man, that's 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 um uh, that's um to me also that ends up being a kind of a wasted a uh, kind of wasted stolen moments waste of time there too we have there's so many more things more positive things to be living one's life for let's just say Dude, you in, you evoked the great Oliver Nelson stolen moments, but you also evoked one of McLuhan's favorite lines: "The Balinese have no word for art; they do everything as well as they can, as well as they can." That's yeah, brilliant. and so that is brilliant. So it leads perfectly into this. James Joyce was the first projectionist in Dublin, but off a hundred years ago, and he basically checked out. He said, "This is stupid. Why should I go inside a building?" and see a movie of a tree when I can go outside and see a real tree. And see a years real later, tree. Yeah, years yeah, yeah, later, yeah. Years, later, years later, William Faulkner said, sometimes the best fiction is more true than journalism. Why do we have to recreate things in order to get them? Why do we have to go right. to a theatrical play? Why do we have to go to a theatrical play of people acting out life? Why don't we just live life? Yeah, exactly. 
Very well, very well said. Very well said. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> why why go out and 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 write a script about life when you should be like living it right right now? You know, no, no, that's that's pretty sharp. That's pretty sharp. I like that. I like. That. Yeah, but indeed, something uh, caused or motivated cave artist. So, what do you yeah. think the motive? What was the motive of the cave artists? And we well, can I think the cave guys, I think the cave artists, they simply drew what they saw. My mother, my, my, my late mother, she was an oil painter, okay? My, my older brother is an architect. You know, I used to do comic book art back when I was in, back, back starting when I was in uh, blah, 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 junior high and stuff like that. The, the 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 cave art the, the cave art these guys based on what the subject matter is they just painted what they saw you know i mean i i don't try to get i don't try i never tried to 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 invent some story behind why this art exists basically it looks to me as the son of an artist as as the son of an artist and a, and a partial artist myself, they just they 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 painted, they drew what they saw, because basically look look at what look at what you got here, you've got people who are going through hunter hunter gathering stages, who are going to just trying to keep the roof over their head and trying to and trying to stay alive. In the meantime, while they're out there doing that. Uh, in their daily lives, hey, look at that! That's a the, look at that thing over there, whatever it is. And I'd like uh, that that that's a pretty cool looking. They don't know if it's an animal or not when, uh, until until they have to actually try to eat it. Um, they look at this thing, okay? And they they basically it's like a mem a memory. A memory uh, uh, exercise back back then back then when 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 they are just just learning how to be people, you know. My 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 opinion is they're, they're the the things about that end up being what we call refer to as cave art, prehistoric cave art, or whatever. These people are just drawing what they see. Period. Yeah. You know, no 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 huge esoteric. Ex explanations uh, uh, or, or something that 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 gets the who's who's ever trying to explain this to corner the market on now what's called archaeology and 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 art history and blah 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 you know these are these are to me it just seems just just as simple as it is they're just drawing what they saw you know that was good it really enlightened me I can it reminded me also of both McLuhan and Warhol said, art is anything you can get away with. But I'm curious if you could just walk us through your choice to, to pursue music as a career. Who did you listen to growing up that made you the tipping point where you go, I'm going to go do that? So, you know, who were you first listening to on what formats, live, radio, record, and when did you, and what point in your life you go, that's what I'm going to do? That The tipping point. Well, my thing was, like, well, among other things, my, my, my parents also, but my mom was a jazz singer as well. She was I kids see. with Lou Rawls. She was kids with Lou Rawls, Miles Davis. Uh, uh, she knew Tina Turner and all those guys. And my, she and my father. And uh, I started playing guitar when I was eight years old after I saw the Beatles on the Ed Sullivan show. But, Isn't that amazing? Age eight. Yeah. Uh, you know, I got to tell you really quick. I interviewed this literature and science professor the other day. Bruce Clark, his, middle, his nickname is Bruno. In the middle of the interview, when I asked him that question, he said, the Beatles on Ed Sullivan. I goes, yeah. And then he says, yeah, and by the way, I, I opened for Zappa once. I says, 
what band he was. I was the bass player in Sha Na Na. And we See, that's what I'm for, saying. Yeah, we were. That's we what opened I mean. We opened for the mothers at the Fillmore. So you see the Beatles on Ed Sullivan. So then you start going, that's what I want to do. Well, the then thing is, that's a, the, 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 here's the, the thing is, before I saw the Beatles, I was still listening to the stuff that my parents listened to. I listened to jazz. I listened to Broadway musicals. I, uh, um, I listened. I, I listened to Chuck Berry, Uncle Chuck, actually, because my mom grew up with him. And oh, every exactly. basically, I listened to what what I liked, what 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 struck my ear as, "Hey, right. that's pretty cool." And basically, I wasn't thinking about, hadn't thought about a career yet. But when I saw the Beatles on Ed Sullivan, and this was 1964. Uh, I had noticed the fact that because rock, rock and roll was a different thing back then, but because they were all producer groups. And but the Beatles, I saw the Beatles a combination of four guys playing their own instruments live that wrote their own material. And yeah. that's the thing. That's 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 what started getting me. I, and because that is what that is one of the things that I did enjoy doing i mean since i was a kid when i was a kid I, I would i would my parents would get me up there and i'd sing in front of you know sing at parties and and, and picnics and things like that because that's what i love to do and yeah after seeing the beatles and seeing the combination of those factors and the the the, the factors that i just named and the, it's their stuff they, you know, they they wrote this stuff. They're playing this stuff themselves with instruments. You know what I mean? A combination of two guitars, bass, and drums. And 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 in 1964, I was like, "Whoa, wait a second. The combination of all those factors really got to me, and it and and it really and it really hit me. So songwriting." Writing lyrics, uh, uh, harmony, uh, 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 rhyming—you know, iambic pentameter, things like that—and I, 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 it really hit me. It really hit me. The, the, that that night, I begged my parents to buy me a guitar. That is, and that's what that's what started me off. This this was really good, Ike, because you led in perfectly to this question. Is a screenwriting teacher told me great art, great music, great film is when you can clearly see the intention of the maker. Kubrick says the opposite. Great film, great art, great music is when you can clearly not see the intention of the maker. <laughs> what, what what role? I'm glad you left that. Good old Stanley. What role does intention play in your creative process as a songwriter? You talked about lyrics. And you know, writing melody and lyrics. What role does intention play in your creative process? Doing that, I see. That's the thing. I never. I don't. I don't go in. I, I don't. I, I don't look in terms of what I intend to do. Basically, when people ask me about my lyrics and and about the songs I write. I basically tell them, you know, I, I write them like I see them. They just, they, they just come to me. They just, they just plop down on top of my head for some somehow, and and they end up, they end up being the way that they are. I, I, I have tried, I, I, I've tried from time to time to, to figure out why did I write this particular song or write these particular lyrics or or whatever. And I really don't know, um, you know, as much as I try to figure out where this song came from or that song. What you know, some some of my songs are political because they they, they may be based uh, upon something I may like or not like politically, or 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 or, or you know, back back when I was a kid, I, I I may have had a crush on this girl here or there or or anything like that. 
and and okay that's 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 basically a different story but i that's as far as that's as far as i go with intent you know i mean well, that was uh, that was well put like that was well put and if the follow up question is based on marcel duchamp said there's no art without an audience how much right. are you think how much are you thinking of your audience when you're writing your song how much are you Not thinking of wow not at all i'm i'm, I'm basically I'm, I'm i'm basically writing writing that what comes from what's coming from my heart from my heart what is dropped upon my head and comes out through the washing machine you know but from from my heart because i never thought of an audience in terms in terms of when i when i have when i have uh, over the years when i sit down and write what ends up being a song, um, I'm not thinking about an audience, and not at all, uh, because that's 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 kind of, to me, that's kind of contrived. You know what I mean? Well, it's interesting, Ike, because Frank said the same thing, and, and I believe him, and I believe you, but with Frank, I would say, not to him personally, but I've pondered this for years, um, well, that sounds good, Frank, but it seems like you're over romanticizing the creative process because you know, if you hit these notes and sing these words, kids will buy your records and you'll be able to make more music. So wow. I think Frank has some sense of being raised in a consumer capitalist society of what he's going to do in regards to his audience. But I, I appreciate the fact because he's so original that he would go, well, I don't think of my audience. I just write this stuff for myself. If other people like it, great. Well, see, that's how I, but the, that's the thing is, I end up, well, since I'm younger than him, uh, the, the thing is I end up finding out whether or not the song works by the fact that whether whether or not it somebody likes it or doesn't like it, it's weird. I mean, I <laughs> my original music, I never never I never would know whether or not it was good or not in terms of out in the outside world to anyone other than me. That until people would go, man, I love that song. It's like, yeah, yeah. really. You know, because I, I, I wouldn't know until you until somebody told me. Yeah, well, you got to admit your solo album. What year did it come out? So, let's see, eighty-seven. What's the title of it? Should have gone before I left. You got to admit that's a good album. <laughs> it is. It is. I always thought so. And that stuff, I had written that stuff, most of those songs, back when Denise and I were in college. You know, back yeah. in the But that was cool, because a couple of years ago, you performed at a bar in the Valley, and it was because some fan of yours knew how to play all the songs, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That yeah, was a cool show. Yeah, of course. See, so that's, I mean, hey, go ahead, go ahead. No, go, go ahead, go ahead. That was fun, yeah. No. Uh, yeah, I mean that's that's what well, I have nothing else to go on. <laughs> I have I have nothing else to go on. You know that's that's I'm just being I, that's that's as honest as I can be. You know, yeah. and I'm lucky, and I consider myself very lucky enough to be able to have just like Frank used to tell me, if even one person likes your stuff, hey, you know, you 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 you're you're doing what you're supposed to do. Yeah, beautiful. So let's stay on music. Aaron Copeland said the four elements or ingredients of music are melody, harmony, rhythm, and tone color. Now we pretty much know what melody, harmony, and rhythm is, but in lay person's terms, how do you describe what tone color is? Uh, that's the first time I've heard that statement, and um, I wouldn't know what to tell you. Uh, um, I I don't see. I don't. I don't. Uh, who did you say that said that? Aaron Copeland. But you know oh, Aaron Melody. Copeland. Aaron, Co yeah, Aaron Copeland. Okay, okay. Well, that's the thing. He's Aaron Copeland. 
is 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 remember this is America, and by the time Aaron Copeland made that statement, he's considered a composer. You understand? And yeah. You know, he's considered a composer. Me, I'm just a black kid from St. Louis. You know, I I basically it's it's like I just I just told you this is it's 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 it's. It, it, it's all, it's all, um, a lot, basically a lot of the feeling, the, 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 you know, the, the, how it feels, how it, how it, how it feels to other people, uh, et cetera, et cetera. It's, it's kind of, yeah, that, that's, that's as close as I can get because, you know, that's, that's just the terms tone, the tone color and things like that. That is, that is the words of, a, a respected and a, a respected and modern composer, and yeah. hell, it, it, even to this day, people don't consider me a composer. So I wouldn't, I really wouldn't know what to say to that. Well, that's all right because the next question, I'm sure you can address because you've already talked about this. But my friend calls the three T's of music the tenets are taste, technique, and theory. Like technique. Huh is like learning what to do with your fingers on the guitar. Theory is, okay. Oh, okay, it's this chord and that. Taste is what, how does one acquire taste? Now, theory and technique, you can acquire by years of practice. How, okay. does, one, how does one acquire taste in realms of music? Oh, I guess by paying attention, I guess. I guess by... Really listening to what what's what's going on, I suppose. I suppose. I mean, lots of people have, <laughs> lots of people are considered to have no taste, and when it comes when it comes to music, you know, because of what they listen to and what they grew up listening to. So that's a hard, that's a, that's an interesting question too, because there is no. I'll say. There is no um, particular specific road to taste or learning taste or anything like that because everyone's basically everyone's definition is totally different. It's really good because it's also like aesthetics. It's like if, it is music, aesthetic. if music works for you, then it's doing right. its job. You know, Correct. a lot of us, oh, you know, uh, Neil Diamond is granola rock. And it's like, no, the mothers were hired to back Neil Diamond once. And I right. asked Fred, what the heck did that, how that happened? He goes, he needed a backup band. And we he needed a backup band. band. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. There you go. And that's but how goes, that works. That's how it works. But it goes exactly. to this recent, this recent movie I highly recommend. It's called Coda. And it, and it tackles a family struggling, being a fisherman. And the woman, the young lady wants to be a singer. So she starts off and they're playing Etta James and she's singing along with Etta. It's really beautiful. Nice, and then in the, nice. the film Pinnacles with Joni Mitchell. Okay. And she, she gets into Berkeley because she can sing a Joni Mitchell song. But in the right. middle of the film, one of her fellow high school student uh Film, music students come over and they listen to the Shags together. Now, the, <laughs> the Shags are like the worst band in the history of the world, but it's an acquired taste. And you know, it's the an acquired band, taste. Yeah, Somebody it, likes it. Somebody yeah, like, likes it. Yeah. yeah, like the back of the album, it has Elvis Costello, Joni, uh, uh, Bonnie Raitt, and Carla Blay going all. This is the purest music ever. But Frank's. <laughs> Frank's quotes the best. It goes better than the Beatles even today. <laughs> but, but again, that's like how does one you know? Because it's like a hipster thing. People go, "Oh, I like the Shags." It's like, do you really yeah. like them? Do it you just, really it's, know it's what musical, they're doing? It's just musical snobbery. That's all. Yeah, everyone. It's just musical snobbery. Everybody has their own favorite stuff that they like, and and. That's that's all it is. It's basically play, people playing musical snobbery chairs, you know, and that's that's all. Hey, but you can see me, right? Say it again. You can see me, right? 
Yeah. Oh, okay. I can see you. It's a, it's a still a frame, but I can see you. This has been good. Yeah. Like you really, I'm, I'm, you really I'm, 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 but I wanted to uh, say, uh, talk about what Igor Stravinsky said for a second. Cause he said, most people don't know what they like. They like what they know. So if you're raised only with the yeah. Beatles, then that's what you like. And so how that's does thing. that's, that's you know, your frame how, of reference? That's your frame of reference. So what about Billy Holiday? What about the American musicals? What about, you know, uh, um, you know, Stockhausen and what about, uh, right. you know, Robert Johnson, all this other music. I like, like the music. ones that I like, you know, I, right. I, I, I grew up listening to all of that stuff and I didn't like every single com composition from Stockhausen or, or, or yeah. you know, uh, it, or whatever musical or whatever like that. Uh, right. Or, but I like the ones that I like, you know, and that's pretty much, that's pretty much it. Yeah. Uh, Oh man, sorry about that. I'm I'm fading a little bit. I I'm a, I'm a little uh, out of breath here. Sorry. Okay. Well, no. If you need to get a drink, of water or something, and if you're just like, hey, I gotta check out soon. That's all right. But this is really yeah. fun. Yeah, and I do have to check out soon. It's juicy. <laughs> Hold on. Yeah. No Go problem. Ahead. Go ahead. Choosing the instrument, the guitar, because McLuhan says that everything we invent extends some humanness. Some like human sensorium. So knife and fork extends our teeth. Clothing right. extends our skin. So, right. you know, even, even non-tangible things like philosophy or religion, we invent it. It extends consciousness or memory or something. Sure. What, what humanness does the guitar extend for you? Uh, I think it extends... Um, as as much as as much as it possibly can, as, as much as I uh, it possibly could, my my I guess my humanity and personality, that's as far as I can get to that. I mean, because it it, it it uh when I when I play when my when I play the guitar, my myself as a guitar person or guitar player, I think it extends um the kind of person I am, or or at least have grown up to be, or or you know what I mean. That, that that's that's as far as I can take it because I I I I when I started playing guitar and became a guitar player, and over the years and over the years, it has it it, it turned out to it 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 it, it, it um it does. It does supply or provide a, that that kind of a, a, a sort of humanity for me, uh, or humanness, as, yeah. as, as you're saying. Yeah, a, 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 it provides a little more humanness for me. I don't know how yet. I've never figured that. I've never figured out how or why that does that. But it hel it helps. It 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 has over the years. It has helped me a lot. It's beautiful because I think it extends identity too. You said that was good. Yeah, 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 let's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's just go to Frank for a second because it is interesting him as a guitarist. I love to talk to him for hours with guitarists. And do you think, in just in general, your hunch, do you think Frank was more a chops player or more a feelings player? Nah, he was a feeling. He always played what he felt, you know? Yeah. I mean, because there's so many people that just hated the way that he played and man, I, lo I loved it because he was just, he was feeling the whole way through, you know, yes. he, Beautiful. he was feeling the whole way through, you know, we don't, he doesn't, he laughed at people. He laughed at chops people. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he really no. did because I mean, and what is, and, and me too, kind of, because, you know, I'm self-taught. I have no formal training in playing guitar or anything like that. I just play what I feel. You know, yeah. I, I play what whatever whatever comes out, I play what I feel. Yeah, I like I like when Frank did the mandatory 
look up to the sky and open your mouth when you're taking your solo. Like exactly, <laughs> exactly, exactly. You the know, great thing, that, the that, great that, thing, yeah. The great thing about Frank is he had a sense of humor. He didn't take things so seriously. So I'm curious, you because you you got along with Frank well in regards to humor and that direct improv on the in the midst of the show improv sure. improvising what what's the roots of your humor who were your humor heroes growing up oh jesus you know my 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 parents um um cartoons you know hey bugs bunny uh, warner brothers cartoons uh, uh um comedians you know, I mean, that's the thing. Funny is funny. You know what I mean? It's it's like it's like um, it's like uh, 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 um, Milton Berle and and people like that used to say, "You can't teach funny." Okay. Yeah. You can't teach funny. And if something if something strikes if something strikes me as funny, I'm all over it, man. I'm all over it. And Frank, he was a hilarious guy. Okay, and he and I, he and I got along so well because um, our senses of humor were kind of were kind of were, were kind of similar. You know, I mean, we found the same we found the same kind of things funny. You know, ninety percent of the time. You know, it, it, and it was just it was it was great. It was great. I had What's so much the, fun with him. I know you can tell you have so. What's the function of laughter? I think, I think the function of laughter, in, in my opinion, it keeps you human. It, it, it keeps you more human. You know, I, I think it, it, it's 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 the great humanizer, as far as I'm concerned. You know, yeah. I, I mean, I, I mean, if people can't laugh or they have no ability to be able to laugh. Or no, or, or just just. Oh, that it, it's this is hard. I, I don't know what I'm saying here, but if they have no ability to laugh or don't even feel the the urge, the need to be able to laugh at whatever, you know, then they got then they have a problem. They have a problem because it, like I said, it's the it's the it's the great it's the great humanizer. You know, it, it yeah. really is. Ike, Ike, you really nailed it. You're you're on the right show. You go in the middle of what you just said a second ago. He says, I don't know what I'm really saying here. You're on a show that's called I'm Probably Wrong About Everything. <laughs> <laughs> but, but it, it really gets me because this, this is a big issue today, but it goes way back. And the question, <laughs> is, the question the question I ask is, can satire be destructive? And Jonathan Swift compared satire to a mirror in which people could see every face but their own. And you go to Frank satire and it was cutting and, you know, it's it's been misunderstood. People go, he was attacking. And I was like, you know, this right. movie, exactly. this movie some, someone says Frank was attacking. I guess. He wasn't attacking people. It was that's the job of the satirist. Exactly. But it is, you know, in the middle of one of his lyrics, he says that great line. You know, you you know, we're talking about the Nazis. You you think we're talking about someone else? Go home and check yourself. Exactly. <laughs> we exactly. But but what is your take on that? You know, Swift saying satire is a mirror in which people can see every face of, but their own. But more so, the question: Can satire be destructive? I don't think so. I don't think yeah. so. Satire is, is destructive only to those who can't. It seems to who can't who take themselves who take themselves far too seriously. First of all, yeah. and I mean sat, satire. That's one thing I loved about being with Frank as I was and for so long, it's, that's the satire part is, is that if you, if you can't take yourself serious, if you take yourself, you can't, you can't laugh at yourself, you're in trouble. Yeah. You know, 
if you can't laugh at yourself, you are in big, big, big trouble. You know, and and it, it and it and it proves itself. It's it proves itself over and over and over and over again. You know, yeah. you look in that mirror. You you look in that mirror and you see everybody except yourself. You know, it, yeah. it's like everybody's everybody's open game. You know, everybody's just you know just. That, that, that you can you can put uh, uh, aim a target at everybody else on the face of the earth except yourself, then you got problems. Then you got problems. You know that you know, and that's uh, that's <laughs> amazing <laughs> what you wrote there because um, you know like I said none of my uh, none of my questions have right or wrong answers, but that one you got right again because you know I asked this guy once. Most people go, can satire be destructive? They go, yes, because, you know, if you do this cartoon about this guy in one country and they kill you, some people think dying is destructive. But I'm just saying, this guy who wrote comedy for uh, Robin Williams, I says, can satire be destructive? He says, that's the job of satire, <laughs> you know? That's the job. That's the yeah. job, exactly, yeah. exactly. And, and then Frank, you know, who else would name a record? Does humor belong in music? Does humor belong in music? <laughs> exactly, exactly. And then, and then and he nailed. I'm right. I'm right know. along with it. I'm, I'm right yeah. there, man. I'm right along with yeah. it. You, you might have been at that show. I saw Frank sing in Las Vegas once, and he's singing "Broken Hearts Are for Assholes," and he's pointing at people in the audience. You're an asshole. You're an asshole. And then right, he right. points. Then he points at himself. At himself, goes, yeah. He you always pointed at himself. Yeah. He always point, He always ended up uh, on that on on that on that 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 verse. He always ended up the last person he always points at is himself. Yes. Indeed. Yes, indeed. Yeah. No no okay. no doubt about it, man. You know, and and I do the same thing, man. You have to be able to laugh at yourself. You got yeah. you have to be able to laugh at yourself otherwise, you know, you're 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 pretty much on on a slippery slope to nowhere. Okay, look, uh, I'm about to uh, collapse here. <laughs> okay, uh, Ike, we we got to continue and do part two some other time. But this sure. has really been a, an honor. Sure, and a man. Pleasure. Thank you I'm, so I'm, much. I, Let's just end on this uh, last question. Then, what gives you the most optimism? Um. <laughs> now, now, uh, what gives me the most optimism is that. My grandchildren, I look at my kids, Isaac and Leah, and then their kids, and they're they're learning, they're they're starting to sing and play music and 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 dance and things like that. And I'm going, man, it 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 it's conti it continues. It continues, you know what I mean? And yeah. the fact that okay, yeah, I'm going through this prostate cancer thing, but I've been at, at, after my treatments and, uh, and, and stuff. As a, 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 as of a year ago, I couldn't walk, and I was having all sorts of problems and things like that. And like like you asked me earlier, what do I think of? You know, what do I think? What am I thinking about when I go to sleep? Yeah, you know, waking up the next day. And the yeah. thing is, because like I said, I've got grandchildren now, and and and. I still, I'm still playing. I'm still singing, but you know, I'm still a little weak right now. But I'm going to, I'm getting back out there. But there is, it, it gives me hope. It gives me hope. It's beautiful. Most people say youth gives them the most optimism, and they ask Groucho Marx at the end of his life, "What gives you the most optimism?" And he even generalized it to other people. So, Ike, it's been an honor and a pleasure, and we, we're a part of the 4-H club here. We're hoping yep. you happy, healthy healing. Thank you, Ike Willis. It's really been an I honor. I miss you, Jerry. I miss you, Jerry. Thank you I so much. You. I miss you a lot. Thank you. Okay, over and out. We'll see you and continue this forever and ever. Okay, we will. See you. Bye.